New on Sunrise, a head-on crash involving an IMPD officer. Coming up, what the driver who hit that squad car admitted to investigators. Plus, new information this morning on the Anthem security breach where hackers may have gained access to the system. And a mild weekend is on tap. Warm breezes out of the southwest will kick in and we will see a lot more clouds today, but mild temperatures all have the details. From Indiana's news leader, Eyewitness News Sunrise starts now. Good morning to you. Welcome to Sunrise. It's now 6 o'clock on your Saturday morning. I'm Naomi Peskovitz here with Kelly Green. And if you're looking at the radar, it might be deceiving because it's cloudy, but it'll mm -hmm. be warm. Yes, it's definitely going to be a mild day. Temperatures will be climbing probably more than 10 degrees above average, so we will definitely take it with some cloud coverage. Taking a look at our satellite, you can see we do have some clouds that have been thickening up over the past couple of hours. And uh, we actually have much more clear skies to our southwest, an area of high pressure to our south. Um, um, east is starting to kick in some of those southerly breezes. We also have an area of low pressure to our northwest and that will allow some clouds to dig into the area as well. But check out these temperatures. It is very mild right now at 30 degrees in Pendleton, 29 in New Palestine, 30 degrees in Westfield and 34 in Lisden, 35 right now in Plainfield. And we do have the clouds around, but temperatures already starting to rebound this morning at 33 degrees. Winds are out of the southwest at six miles per hour. We do have a wind chill value of 28 degrees. Future track 13 here shows a few clouds. I do think we'll see more clouds than what this is actually showing, but those temperatures will be climbing into the upper 40s this afternoon. Some areas will get into the low 50s, especially in our southern viewing area. Uh, Bedford and Seymour climbing into the low 50s this afternoon and not out of the question that Indianapolis may actually hit that 50 degree mark. Cloudy skies this afternoon. Those winds will be out of the southwest and it will be a bit breezy at times with a high around 48. A little bit warmer yet for tomorrow, but we are tracking some rain chances. I'll have those details coming up in your SkyTrack 13 forecast. Naomi. Kelly, thank you. New on Sunrise and only on 13 this morning, an IMPD officer was taken to the hospital after a head-on crash with a driver who admitted he'd been drinking. It happened just before 3 this morning near the intersection of 30th and White River Parkway on the city's near northwest side. Investigators tell us that the officer was traveling east on 30th Street when the driver of a Chevy Malibu turned from White River Parkway into oncoming traffic and hit the squad car. Officers say the driver admitted to investigators that he'd been drinking. He was taken to Eskenazi with a cut to the head. The officer was taken to Methodist with only minor injuries. New information this morning about a data breach involving millions of health insurance records from Anthem. Investigators believe hackers obtained the credentials of five different employees to penetrate the system, and hackers may have first gained access back in December. In the wake of the cybersecurity attack, scammers are now trying to reach customers. Anthem is now warning customers of email scams. The emails, like this one you see here, are designed to appear as though they're from Anthem with messages like, click here for credit monitoring, but don't do it. The emails are not from Anthem. Anthem says don't click on any links in the email, don't reply to the email, or reach out to senders, and don't open any attachments that might arrive with those emails either. Anthem is also in the legal crosshairs as a result of that data breach. The health insurance company is facing three class action lawsuits just in the first few days after news of the breach first broke, and that includes Indiana. The Noblesville woman who filed the suit claims Anthem did not do enough to protect her information. And coming up at 945 this morning, we'll talk about the latest security breach and how you can protect your information with State Attorney General Greg Zeller. And now to a feel-good story growing worldwide, support for a nine-year-old Indianapolis Girl Scout who is recovering tonight from a gunshot wound. The child was caught in the line of fire earlier this week and police are still searching for the gunman. But this morning, the victim's friends, fellow scouts, and complete strangers are pitching in to help. This morning, David McAnally has a look at their fundraising efforts and a special welcome home. Police continue to ask for the public's help, anything they could have, providing information on that blue SUV from which those shots were allegedly fired. But the family of the victim here, they're getting help that they never even had to ask for. In her aunt Sheree's arms, Sanai Miller, home from the hospital, heads to a party. 
get better. Her fellow Girl Scouts, friends and neighbors shared cards. I hope you feel better and when you come back be more happy and wonderful. Remember, you got this. I believe in you. Don't give up. Hey, baby. Caring for that leg, pierced by a bullet Tuesday night. Since I was walking to her Girl Scout meeting to pick up cookies to sell when somebody fired shots from a blue SUV. Does it still hurt? A little bit. Doctors removed the bullet. She had to go back to the hospital for fever on Thursday, and she'll see a surgeon Monday. She's handling it very well. She's kind of still afraid um, going back to school and things like that. But we're going to see her counseling so that she won't be scarred from the situation. While she heals, a school Sinai doesn't even attend is helping. When I heard about it, it just broke my heart. Bye, sweetie. Have a good weekend. So nearby West Lane Middle School principal asked her school to pitch in. We collected $667.25. From middle school. From middle schoolers, um, t teachers and students, but pouring their hearts out. Nobody should be randomly shot in the legs, so I don't know, every, bit, every little bit helps. One student donated 90 bucks, his Christmas cash. He decided, what am I going to do, buy another game? No, this little girl can have my money. Yeah, you should got that for you. Thank you. Girl Scout pals are raising money too, and Girl Scouts of Central Indiana is letting the public buy cookies online with credit for the sales going to Sinai. She's actually excited about it. I was relieved because she's better and she's out of the hospital. Back with her troop, 7533. They're nice. You may call Crime Stoppers at 262 TIPS if you have any information on the shooter or that uh, blue Ford SUV that was allegedly used there. I asked Sanai uh, what her favorite Girl Scout cookie flavor was, and she says it's the Samoas. David McAnally, Channel 13 Eyewitness News, Sunrise. David, thank you. A serious crash on State Road 47 killed an Anderson woman, and her husband was also injured last night. Chopper 13 HD flew over the scene near the Boone and Hamilton County line. Investigators say the couple was traveling home from Chicago when their van drifted off the road. 74-year-old Janet Ellie died when they slammed into that concrete bridge railing. Her 78-year-old husband Larry, who was driving, was able to crawl from the wreckage. He went to the hospital with a leg injury. Police are still trying to determine the cause. A possible break in the case of a father and daughter murdered in Hartford City. Police have an unnamed person of interest in custody this morning at the Jay County Jail. The shootings happened Thursday morning at the Hartford Square Apartments. Someone killed 40-year-old Shane Williamson and his 14-year-old daughter, Caitlin Williamson, who was a high school freshman. Well, we now know when the trials will be held for two of the suspects in the deadly Southside explosion that killed two people and destroyed dozens of homes. Yesterday, attorneys for accused ringleader Mark Leonard made a surprise move by withdrawing their request to Mark, postpone his trial. He will be the first to go to trial in June in St. Joseph County. A judge also moved the trial for his brother and alleged accomplice, accomplice Bob Leonard to Fort Wayne. All four suspects in the case are charged with roughly 50 counts, including murder, arson, and conspiracy. And it's going to be a much warmer day today, which is some good news, even though you see some clouds here on the radar. And Kelly Green is here now to talk to us a little bit more about what we'll see, how warm it'll be above average. Right, it is. It's going to be a great weekend. Mild temperatures on the way. Winds will be turning out of the southwest. Yes, we're going to be dealing with some clouds at least through the morning hours, but we'll see an improvement later this afternoon. And we do have a chance of rain this weekend. I'll have the timing coming up in your SkyTrack 13 forecast. Plus, President Barack Obama makes a stop in Indy. What he talked to local students about during his three-hour visit. And first the president, and now the king arrives in Indianapolis. But the Pacers don't treat LeBron like royalty. The highlight you'll want to see coming up next.
Welcome back. It was a brief three hour trip to Indianapolis as President Barack Obama talked about what he calls middle class economics. The visit included a town hall style speech at Ivy Tech Community College and I was there yesterday for the president's arrival and departure. Here's a look at his message to Hoosiers. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming the president of the United States, Barack Obama. Indianapolis welcomed the president to campus where he spoke about his plan to make two years of community college free. Here in America, it shouldn't matter how much money your folks make. If you're willing to work hard, you should be able to get that opportunity. And you shouldn't necessarily have $100,000 worth of debt when you leave. Army veteran Christy Lee Vickers had a follow-up question in mind. How does this affect a veteran's use of education? The president said the challenge goes beyond the classroom, and there's room to help veterans find work after school. So that folks aren't just getting hired at the bottom rungs, but have the opportunity to maybe come in at a higher wage and a higher salary. So we've got to tie together the education process with the hiring process. I like the answer, but at the same time, I need to, I feel like there's some gray area. Though several Hoosier politicians, including the governor, joined the president during his visit, Congressman Andre Carson told us about his special invite on board Air Force One. You think the Secret Service, but there are a lot of military personnel aboard, and there are different offices and different uh, agencies present that you don't want to mess with. So. And the Indiana Republican Party is echoing those comments. They released a statement last night following the president's visit, criticizing, criticizing his higher education proposal. The party chair says the plan, quote, fails to address college affordability as costs are merely shifted from individuals to taxpayers. And another top U.S. official is planning a trip to Indianapolis. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy will travel here on Monday as part of a cross-country listening tour. He plans to talk about the Affordable Care Act. The deadline to sign up for coverage is just more than a week away. Indiana's deadliest flu outbreak in a decade is showing no signs of slowing down. New numbers out from the state health department show seven new flu deaths in the past week. That raises the total number of deaths this season to 115. That's compared to 70 total last season. Most of the victims this year are Hoosiers over the age of 65. Switching gears now to the weather, and Kelly Green is here to talk about your mild forecast, which is great news. Yes, it's going to feel balmy out there because we're going to see temperatures climbing into the 40s, possibly some 50-degree weather in some locations in central Indiana. Yes, we've seen the clouds filtering in as an area of low pressure to our northeast drifts across the Great Lakes area, but all in all, we do have dry conditions on tap for today. Tomorrow, a little bit different story, and I'll get into details about that in a moment, but but take a look at this temperature change. It is 13 degrees warmer right now in Kokomo than yesterday at this time. 19 degrees warmer in Lebanon, 18 degrees warmer right now in Indianapolis. So temperatures already rebounding this morning. It's currently 33 degrees in Indianapolis. We were in the upper 20s just a couple hours ago. 29 right now in Marion, 34 in Muncie, 33 in Lafayette. And that southwesterly breeze is really going to allow those temperatures to climb quickly today. It is 33 at the Indianapolis airport with winds out of the southwest at six miles per hour. We do have a wind chill value of 28, so really not too bad at all. We have an area of high pressure to our southeast, another area of low pressure to our northwest. So we're kind of sandwiched in between a couple of systems here, but because of that, we're going to see those southerly breezes really picking up today, and that will bring some warm air into the area. Now, we do have a lot of snowpack, especially in some of our northern, uh, north central viewing area, and that will allow some fog to develop this morning into the afternoon. I think that is very likely with that warm air over those cold conditions at the ground. We'll see the clouds thickening up as we head into the later hours uh, tomorrow. But in the meantime, here's a look at this afternoon. We'll see the clouds around for the most part, but winds will be out of the southwest and temperatures climb into the upper 40s this afternoon for Indianapolis. Later on tonight, we'll see the clouds around as well, but temperatures only fall to 40 degrees. The winds will actually start to pick up even more tonight. I do think we could see some gusts around 20, 25 
25 miles per hour. So it will be a breezy but mild overnight and patchy fog is likely. Now during the day tomorrow we'll see the clouds around and it really should be a dry morning as you're heading out to run your errands or head to church service. We'll see uh, the chances of rain increase as we head into the afternoon hours. Anytime after 12 noon will be possible but better chances of rain arrives by late afternoon and because of the temperatures being so mild tomorrow it will be in the form of rain. So here's a look at your forecast for tomorrow. Some light rain will be possible looking at maybe a tenth of an inch at best and not everyone will see rain. Temperatures climb to around 49 degrees tomorrow afternoon. Another day where we could see possibly a 50 degree temperature. As we head into Sunday night, we do have the potential of a bit of a wintry mix as the system scoots on out of here. May see a bit of a changeover from rain to some light snow showers into early morning on Monday. So just keep checking back with us for the latest on that. In the meantime, it will be a mild weekend with temperatures this afternoon climbing into the upper 40s as well as tomorrow. But we'll put that chance of rain in the forecast for tomorrow afternoon. 34 on Monday and really we stay pretty dry until we head towards Wednesday. Naomi. Kelly, thank you. The Pacers welcomed the King to their court last night and sent him off without a crown. LeBron James and the Cavaliers hoped for their 13th straight win, and the Cavs led for the majority of the game at Banker's Life, but it didn't happen. A huge fourth quarter from Solomon Hill and George Hill and former Cavalier C.J. Miles fueled an exciting Pacer comeback. We haven't had one of these in a, in a while. You know, home or on the road, so... Um, you know, to see the uh, sort of the, I don't know what you want to call it, um, you know, George Hill, David West, Roy Hibbert, you know, combination that's been so successful for us with some other parts in there. Uh, succeed with some of the new parts is, is part of gelling. It's part of, you know, our plan this year to uh, get this new group to come together. And, um, you know, so this is a big step in doing that. Dave Calabro will have much more on the Pacers' biggest win of the season. That's coming up in Sports Plus. Right now on WTHR.com, read why Bob Kravitz thinks this season is not a lost cause yet for the Pacers. He also shares why he thinks the front office should keep this group together. You can read that column exclu exclusively right now on WTHR.com. Well, next on Sunrise, connecting with the community, the group that's been helping young men in Indianapolis for decades. Plus, the area code change affecting many Hoosiers who must dial 10 digits starting today.
Welcome back. Time now is 622 and connecting with the community. It's a new series we are starting here on Eyewitness News to highlight the good coming from the hard work of volunteers. Here's Nicole Masensik with more on the story. It's a group called 100 Black Men of Indianapolis. It's also known as the 100. The mentoring based nonprofit has been working with our Indianapolis youth for 30 years and right now more than 200 young men are involved in the program. I got to see the difference they're making when I visited one of the 100 school-based programs. For these young men, lunchtime at Theodore Potter School is a chance to chat with friends and learn lessons from mentors. Okay, so you yeah. talked about goals? Yeah. 11-year-old Malachi Woodford is in the fifth grade and enjoys spending time with the 100. When my hand is up? Okay. They teach you how to be a young man and how to prosper in life, how to um, get your dream job. Um, how to get good grades in school. My name is Mr. Chapman. Today's lesson, what makes a good leader? Give me some examples of what you believe leadership is. Empathy. In the right direction. Leading others in the right direction. I like that. Ante Johnson is the executive director of the 100. I don't know where I would be right now had it not been for a mentor in my life. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. Responsibility. We spend uh, time with our, our mentees talking about, you know, behavior. We're talking about life challenges. What does it mean to um, be a young man in today's society? So how do you get good grades? You still. Life lessons are learned, but it's through conversations that relationships and trust are built. And the study, what do you have to do? They understand what you're going through and saying. Anything's on my mind, what happened to school, how, um, I've been good or bad or sad or mad or whatever happened in my day. So that's kind of your goal is to be able to help your family. Yeah. Okay. One of the mentors Malachi can talk to is Bruce Edelin. He's a Lilly retiree and now owns a consulting business. These kids will be mentored one way or the other. They'll either be mentored by us or they'll be mentored by the gangs within their communities. So you can just have to decide who's going to mentor them, whether you're going to actually take the time to do that or you're going to let somebody else go to do it, because somebody's going to do it. Mentors invest time, give advice, and provide a sounding board, but the work, that's left up to the young men. All right, I have a feeling that everybody has done a, a, a fabulous job here. Ultimately, they do all the work. I mean, all we try to do is uh, to spur what's already inside them. Yes, sir, I want to hear from you. My goal is make money with my mom. Getting straight A's. Getting good grades. I would like to work hard and get a good job. Be good. Outstanding. There's an, an old adage that says, you know, uh, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. And so um, there's safety when you can bounce things off of people and get their, their understanding, their ideas uh, from it. The 100 black men of Indianapolis are always looking for mentors or volunteers of any ethnicity. And school-based mentoring is just part of how they are making a difference. For more information about connecting with our community and the work the 100 does, just head to WTHR.com and look for this story. I look forward to sharing more next month when we connect with another nonprofit making life better in central Indiana. Nicole, thank you. Well, starting today, if you live in the 812 area code, you'll need to dial 10 digits even for local calls. That's because service providers will be using 930 as the area code for new numbers starting on March 7th. Right now, the 812 area code covers the southern third of Indiana, including Bloomington, Terre Haute, and Evansville. The Powerball jackpot continues to grow, and you still have time to get a ticket before tonight's big drawing. Matching all six numbers tonight will win you a whopping $380 million. That's a $256 million cash value. The drawing is tonight at 11. Well, coming up in the next half hour of Sunrise, a special moment for children battling cancer, where they'll get their special moment to shine today on the football field. And we finally have a nice change in the weather pattern this weekend. More mild air moves in. Check out these temperatures. Already at 29 in New Palestine, 30 degrees in Pendleton, 31 in Newcastle. And it is going to be a mild afternoon as well as tomorrow. But we are tracking rain chances. I'll have those details coming up in your SkyTrack 13 forecast.
a safe haven for Craigslist. How police are making it safer for you to buy and sell online without getting ripped off or even worse. It will be a mild weekend. Yes, we're seeing some clouds moving in this morning and we'll likely see a pretty cloudy weekend, but temperatures will be mild. I'll have the details coming up in your SkyTrack 13 forecast. Plus, a special moment for children in our community battling cancer. I'm Matt McCutcheon with a heartwarming story about what's bringing them together with NFL hopefuls coming up on Sunrise this Saturday morning. From Indiana's news leader, Eyewitness News at Sunrise continues. Good morning to you. Welcome back to Sunrise. It's now 6.30. I'm Naomi Peskovitz here with Kelly Green. And uh, yesterday I was bundled up outside awaiting the president in uh, earmuffs. I had hand warmers. Today, yes. not, not so much. Right. Finally, some nice changes. And yes, we have that snowpack that's keeping us colder. But we are going to see the winds picking up out of the southwest today. And that will help push in some mild air this weekend. It's going to be a nice break from the bitter cold conditions. And we do have some clouds that have been moving in over the past few hours, and that has made way for a mild start today as well. But notice even off to our southwest, some clearer skies. I do think we'll see a little bit of sun and clouds throughout the day today, but mainly cloudy but mild. It is currently 30 degrees in Pendleton, 32 in Greenfield, 30 degrees in Shelbyville, and uh, 34 already in Plainfield. Mostly cloudy right now at the Indianapolis Airport, and winds are out of the southwest at 6 miles per hour. We do have a wind chill value of 28, with that air temperature already at 33. It dropped into the upper 30s earlier this morning, but temperatures will rebound quickly this afternoon into the upper 40s all across central Indiana. A bit cooler in some of our northern view and area where that snowpack is a bit deeper. But to check out farther to the south, see more Bedford in the low 50s this afternoon. Not out of the question that Indianapolis could make that 50 degree mark, but not a record breaking day. The record for today is 66 degrees. This afternoon though, we'll see those winds out of the southwest and temperatures climb into the upper 40s. Tomorrow we are tracking some rain chances. I'll have the timing on that coming up in just a few minutes. Naomi? Kelly, thank you. An Indiana town is trying to create a safe zone for Craigslist users. Whitestown wants to prevent online deals from ending in crime by offering its own lobby for transactions. They're inviting people to meet buyers or sellers in their town hall lobby Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Even if it's after hours and the lobby is closed, no problem. Whitestown police say you can still come to their parking lot and do your business transaction there where they have security cameras rolling all the time. It doesn't take any man hours from us. The cameras are already running anyway. Agencies across Indiana are also opening their doors to help keep Craigslist users safe. That includes the Spencer Police Department in Owen County and the LaPorte County Sheriff's Department. TurboTax has temporarily stopped processing state tax refund filings nationwide because of concerns over fraud, and this includes Indiana. The company who owns TurboTax says criminals may be using stolen personal information to file fake returns to collect refunds. The Indiana Department of Revenue says it's working with TurboTax to protect Hoosiers. The suspension does not affect the filing of federal income tax returns. And if you're looking for some help with your taxes, there are a number of ways to find a tax preparer. The IRS website at irs.gov offers a search page to help you find someone who meets the agency's qualifications to prepare federal returns. Just click Choosing Your Tax Professional. There are also national tax prep chains that can help you, including H&R Block, Jackson Hewitt, and Liberty Tax Service. And you just might be eligible for free tax help if your household income was low to moderate and you're 60 years or older, the AARP Foundation Tax Aid Service can hook you up with a trained volunteer. The parents of the Indianapolis man killed by ISIS are giving their thanks to Butler University for establishing a scholarship in their son's name. This week, Butler announced the new scholarship that honors Abdul Rahman Kassig's legacy of humanitarian service. The former Butler student was working to help refugees in Syria when he was captured by ISIS. The terrorist group executed him in November. We have information about how to donate to the Kassig Scholarship on WTHR.com. Just click on Hot Topics. And Columbus North basketball standout Josh Spidell is still in critical condition this morning following a car crash last weekend. But the support for Josh and his family continues to grow. Today, the girls' basketball team at Columbus North plans to donate proceeds from their game 
to the Josh Strong Fund. It was started to help with his medical bills, now reaching nearly $40,000. 500 of that came from a summer league teammate from Carmel. This last year, he actually, he was my AU teammate, and, uh, and he was my roommate a couple times. So, I mean, obviously I know him really well, and he's a great kid. The Indiana Pacers are also showing their support with this video message that aired during last night's game. Paul George and several other players take turns wishing Josh a fast recovery, and we do as well. This morning, a special moment for children battling cancer. They'll get to have their moment to shine on the football field. Sunrise reporter Matt McCutcheon joins us live this morning with a heartwarming story. Matt, good morning to you. Naomi, good morning. Good morning, everyone. This particular part of the combine takes place here this morning at the St. Vincent's Sports Performance Center. And when you think of the combine, you think a lot of the competitiveness, right? The testing, the physical endurance, all of that that goes with it. And the combine itself brings roughly 4,000 people to the Circle City each and every year. But today, it isn't about the economic impact of that. It's not about the city's exposure, and it's not about the competitiveness. Today, you could say, is all about the humanity. Now, look at video shows us a rare look inside to that inn. This is where several children who are battling and suffering from various stages and various forms of cancer will come together today to get a chance to get out of the hospital, forget about that cancer, and instead turn their focus today to their passion, to their interests, football playing. They will be here today with several NFL hopefuls from around the area, around the community who are coming out here today who also want to be in the NFL, who will get a chance to mentor them and do some of the drills that they do, albeit with a lot less intensity here today. These are children who are suffering cancer and are at the Peyton Manning Children's Hospital. This is a closed event that will allow their parents and their families to come here who probably haven't had a lot of time to, to really smile or be happy, right? Today they get a chance to actually see their children here smiling, playing a game that they love. This gets underway here at 11 o'clock this morning and coming up here in our next hour on Sunrise, we'll talk to those who are actually involved in today's part of this event and what they take away from it as well. That's coming up here in our 8 o'clock hour after the Today Show. For now, reporting live, Matt McCutcheon, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Matt, thank you so much. We'll check back with you soon. The, the famous Westminster Dog Show is about a week away, but before the best in show is crowned, you can see some of the top dogs right here in Indy. Today kicks off the four-day competition for the Hoosier Kennel Club's Winter Classic. The dogs are evaluated in part on their frame, muscle, tone and hair and competitors like to show off their dogs whenever they can. The dog show runs from 9 to 5 today in the West Pavilion of the State Fairgrounds and from 8 to 5 tomorrow through Sunday. Tickets are 7 bucks. Kids 12 and under get in for free and we will have a live report from the dog show that's coming up at 8:45 this morning. I love that guy with his tongue just <laughs> hanging out there. Could be a winner, and it's also based on personality, of course. Mm -hmm. Today they'll be nice and warmed up, though, because it's really nice out yes, today. Yes, it's going to be a mild weekend before colder air returns. So if you have the winter blues, we get a break from the winter. It feels like spring today, with temperatures already in the low to mid-30s across central Indiana. I'll have details about your weekend forecast coming up in your SkyTrack 13 forecast in just a few minutes. And Star-Lord makes good on a Super Bowl bet with Captain America. How actor Chris Pratt is paying up.
Welcome back. Here's a look at what's trending today. Two big names in the Marvel Universe united in Boston yesterday for two reasons. To raise money for charity and to make, a good, make good on a Super Bowl bet. That included actor Chris Pratt, a diehard Seattle Seahawks fan. Last week, he made a Super Bowl bet with Chris Evans, who plays the role of Marvel's Captain America. But instead of betting money, the pair each agreed to visit a children's charity of the other superhero's choice if they lost their bet. So yesterday, Chris Pratt dressed up as Star-Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy and visited children at Christopher's Haven in Boston. The pair has raised $26,000 so far. They'll keep it going until Evans visits Seattle Children's Hospital dressed up in his own Captain America costume. <laughs> so cool, much better than betting money. Yes, super fun. And we have a follow-up to a story that has touched millions online about a chance encounter between a student and a photographer that changed everything for a school in a rough New York neighborhood. Humans of New York photographer Brandon Stanton took a photo of Vidal and asked him to describe the person who had influenced his life the most. He responded by describing how his principal taught him that he matters. And since that photo was posted online two weeks ago, more than $1.2 million has been raised to help fund trips to Harvard for those students. The principal wants to show her students that there's no place they don't belong. And the pair recently received an invitation that proved just that. Vidal and his principal were invited to the White House to meet the president. President Obama opened up about some of the struggles he faced on his way to becoming president. And cool to see him mm -hmm. here in town yesterday, yeah, too. Yeah, very neat. Also trending today, employees at Target helped a teen get ready for a big day. Yeah, he came looking for a clip-on tie <laughs> for an interview, but the store only had a regular necktie. So an employee taught the teen how to tie one right there in the store. And then he talked him through some Aww. interview <laughs> questions, too, and gave him some practice handshakes. and. Someone, we're so lucky, snapped a picture of it all happening and posted it on Facebook. It's gotten more than 40,000 likes. That's awesome. That's so cool. And I can't tie a tie, so no. <laughs> props to him for going for the clip on, yeah. but very nice of that Target employee mm -hmm. to kind of show him the rope. So cool. Well, if you're out and about today, you will enjoy it because it's going to feel so much better than what we've seen. Yes, we need a break from these winter blues and finally some spring-like air will be pushing in this weekend. Yeah, we may have to deal with a couple of sprinkles here and there, but uh, for the most part, it's going to be a mainly dry weekend. We also have some clouds that have filtered in this morning and that is making way for a mild start today as well. Temperatures fell into the upper 40s this morning, but check out this 24 hour temperature change. It is 18 degrees warmer right now than yesterday at this time in Indianapolis, 16 degrees warmer in Rensselaer. So quite a uh, huge difference from yesterday and we are going to see those mild temperatures stick around all weekend long. It's currently 33 in Greensburg, 33 in Indianapolis, 37 already in Bloomington and 32 degrees right now in Crawfordsville. Now we do have the clouds around. The winds are picking up out of the southwest though and that is going to help us out throughout the day today. Currently 33 degrees at the Indianapolis airport. Wind chill value making it feel like it's 28 so really not too bad at all. We do have an area of low pressure to our northwest, an area of high pressure to our southeast and that is going to help allow pump in some of that southwesterly flow that is going to bring in some of that warmer air. So throughout the day today we'll see the clouds around um, mix of sun and clouds at times, but I do think we'll see more clouds than sun. And temperatures will climb quickly this afternoon. Taking a look at your forecast for this afternoon, temperatures will be climbing into the upper 40s with winds out of the southwest. Yes, it will be a little bit breezy at times, but we'll still enjoy those warm temperatures uh, in the upper 40s. As we head into the overnight, the clouds thicken back up again. It will stay dry. It looks like the rain will hold off during the overnight, and temperatures will fall just to 40 degrees, so not too bad, but it will be a bit breezy. I do think we'll see a gust or two around 20 to 25 miles per hour. We also have the potential of patchy fog as that warm air still moves over the snowpack that we have on the ground. Now, during the day tomorrow, mainly uh, cloudy but dry start for tomorrow morning as we head into the afternoon. Anytime after 12 noon, I do think we could see some light sprinkles, but then better chances will be by late afternoon. And again, not everyone will see rain, and it's not going to be heavy, up to a tenth of an inch at best, it looks like, 
as this uh, rain moves in. So your forecast for tomorrow, another mild day. Temperatures climbing to 49 degrees by tomorrow afternoon. Again, winds will be turning out of the southwest. A bit breezy at times from 10 to 20 miles per hour, but a pretty nice day. As we head into Sunday evening, more widespread rain as we head into our southeastern viewing area tomorrow night. But all in all, pretty quiet. It will be after midnight, though. I think we have the potential of seeing maybe a wintry mix of rain to snow early Monday morning. So you'll want to check in with Sean Ash tomorrow night, as well as Chuck and Nicole on Monday morning for sunrise, just in case if we do have some messy conditions on Monday morning. 48 degrees is your high for this afternoon. Just unbelievably warm. That's 10 degrees above average. 49 for tomorrow with a chance of some light rain. And then we get into a drier pattern for a couple of days. Monday and Tuesday, high of 34 on Monday, 37 on Tuesday. Chance of rain on Wednesday. Naomi? Kelly, thank you. Weekend Sunrise of the Movies takes a look at what's new in theaters each Saturday. Here's Raphael Seth with the box office preview. Do you know what this will do to people when they find out the truth? Mila Kunis is the queen of the world in Jupiter Ascending. She wakes up as a blue-collar nobody in this sci-fi epic. Then a Spock-eared Channing Tatum shows up and tells her she's actually the rightful alien ruler of planet Earth. And one more thing, it's about to be destroyed. Jupiter Ascending's rated PG-13. You are the seventh son of a seventh son. Seven doesn't feel like a lucky number in Seventh Son. Ben Barnes is a farm boy who ventures out on his own, but he's soon scooped up by mystical warrior Jeff Bridges and trained for heroic adventures, the main one being to get rid of demon queen Julianne Moore and her army of dark henchmen. Seventh Son is rated PG-13. What is this place? SpongeBob goes 3D in the SpongeBob movie Sponge Out of Water. The popular Nickelodeon cartoon leaves his pineapple under the sea and takes to the shore in search of Mr. Krabs stolen Krabby Patty recipe, bearded bandit Antonio Banderas is the culprit, and he's looking to have himself a fish fry. The SpongeBob movie is rated PG. That's the box office preview. Raphael Seth, NBC News. Raphael, thank you. Now here's Dave Calabro with a look at what's next in sports. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Dave Calabro. Operation Basketball is coming away. Wapa Hunting's all fired up. We'll be right back.
Eyewitness Sports. Hey, good morning, everybody. What a way to start the weekend. The Pacers, a fantastic finish against the Cavs last night and the King LeBron James in town. The Cavs have their 13th consecutive win, but watch the Pacers taking care of business. Solomon Hill with a flush. Pacers down three, fourth quarter. Fans going nuts. It was sold out again. C.J. Miles going against his old team. Monster night, 26 points. Pacers in the lead. And George Hill finishing touch. Watch this, the one-handed three-pointer and the foul. Pacers win 103-99. You know, them being the hottest in the league and be able to get a big win on our home floor. And in the middle of this process of, like you said, getting everybody right is big because winning builds confidence. But being the hottest team in the league definitely is a, is a whole nice thing done. Not to mention that I played well, played there last year. I feel like that's the, the way that the Pacers normally play, you know, when it gets uh, down to the gritty that we're able, able to overcome them games by our physicality and, and smash mouth type of. Uh, defense that we know, always normally play, but uh, we're getting back to that. Uh, like I said, it's going to take time. We're, we're getting all the guys back together finally. And it's time for Operation Basketball. The Wapahani Cheerleaders are in studio. First time ever. It's time to play the game. Here's Rich and I with two big games. Lawrence Central is Josh Strong, showing support and raising money for Josh Fidel, the Columbus North player in critical condition after a car accident. Chris Wilkes is strong for North Central. 26 points for the long sophomore. Kyle Guy hits the long shot for the Bears on the way to 25 points. But North Central coach Doug Mitchell styles the red jacket to an 84-72 Panthers win. Another Metropolitan Interscholastic Conference matchup at Lawrence North, where they love bacon. Pat Bacon scores 16 points and cuts the Carmel lead to just one to open the fourth quarter. Josh Spidell has support here too. Carmel's top player Ryan Klein has already visited Spidell at the hospital and the Greyhounds raised about $500 for the Josh Strong Fund. Ryan Klein scored 25 points for Carmel, most from long distance. And with the game tied and time running out, Klein pulls up and buries another three-pointer. Bacon gets a final look for the Wildcats, but misses the frying pan. Carmel stays in the Mick title chase with a 52-49 win. I'm Rich Nye, Operation Basketball. And on this Saturday morning, time for cheerleaders of the week from Wapahani High School. Ladies, take it away. Show. Glad to have you guys here all the way from Muncie making a road trip. I'm Dave Calabro. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> all right, Dave, ladies, thank you. We are working on several stories for our next two hours of sunrise that starts at 8 o'clock. We continue to follow the latest on the Anthem data breach, how it might affect you if you are a customer. Plus, we sit down with Indiana Attorney General to talk about how to safeguard your personal info. And they're all trying to be the top dog, the best in show. We'll take you to the Indie yeah. Classic Winter Dog Show and introduce you to some of the very cute competitors. Oh, the little and big dogs. Yes, You'll find the them all there. The poodles crack me up. Oh. Oh, and the way they're cut. So well Love groomed. Mm -hmm. Well, you won't need much of a heavy coat today right. for the first time in quite a while. I know. It's going to be nice to get a break from all of those very bitter cold temperatures we had earlier this mm -hmm. week. So finally get a take a break from that and see some spring-like conditions moving in. Now, we do have some clouds that have pushed in over the past few hours, but I think we'll see a break in that a little bit later on this morning, and we'll see some sunshine. Temperatures are currently at 32 degrees in Crawfordsville, 35 already in Bloomington, 27 still in Richmond, but we'll see temperatures climbing quickly today thanks to a southwesterly flow. We do have high pressure to our southeast, and that is going to allow that backside of that system to really bring in some of that southerly air and that will bring in more mild conditions for this afternoon and tomorrow. Temperatures this afternoon climbing into the upper 40s. That's 
10 degrees above average. So a mix of sun and clouds through the afternoon. Winds will be out of the southwest, 10 to 15 miles per hour. It will be a bit breezy tonight. May see some patchy fog this evening. And then temperatures only fall to 40 degrees tomorrow morning. Another nice rebound tomorrow afternoon with a high near 49 degrees. We do have a chance of some light rain tomorrow afternoon. Not everyone will see rain. And I see this won't last forever as mm -hmm. usual. Yeah, all right, Kelly, right. thank you. And thank you all for joining us. We will be back at 8 o'clock after the Today Show.